uh, before we start, let me give a brief introduction about myself. Uh, my name is Shuchi Singla. I have almost uh, 11 years of IT experience out of which almost eight years of experience is, is working in Agile. Uh, I am a certified safe practitioner and consultant and Agile consultant. I have been doing uh, trainings, consulting and coaching on various Agile related topics like Cucumber, Fitness, Kanban, Lean, Agile testing, scaled Agile framework for quite some time now. Uh, before we start with this webinar, I would uh, want, uh, so can you guys please use your chat window to type what is your expectation from this webinar uh, and what is that you would want to know from Agile and Agile test uh, certification perspective. Please use your chat window and uh, I would want to know from you what is your expectation from this webinar and what is that you would want to know from Agile and Agile certification perspective. Please take two minutes. Okay, I think um, uh, what the main major questions that we have uh, focus around uh, why PMI ACP, how PMI ACP are dif is different from PMP. I see one of the uh, some of the people some of people are CSM as already CSM certified and they are now looking forward for PMI ACP certification. So how CSM and PMI ACP would be different, and uh, the certificate uh, and what is the process of uh, appearing for the certification exam okay uh, so fortunately we will be covering most of these all of these questions during our webinar if you have any questions during the webinar please feel free to type in there and I'll take it from there okay uh, since we are more number of people I would not be able to unmute you guys for the for the interactive session but uh, let's try to interact as much as possible through the chat window okay Okay, so the high level objectives of this certification, uh, this webinar would be why, why do you think we should uh, even go for Agile? Why, does, why, why not the traditional waterfall model that we have? What is the, uh, what is the exam pattern for PMI ACP? What are the uh, uh, qualification needed for PMI ACP certification? A difference between a PMP and a PMI ACP and why do you need to go for PM, PMI ACP in this case uh, if you're already PMP? And uh, maybe to add to this, we will also talk about how CSM and PMI ACP are different and uh, what are the what wh how if you are already a CSM how would you benefit from PMI ACP? So these are the few high level topics that I would try to cover during this webinar in the next one hour. Okay. Okay. Uh, first, I think uh, the guys who are already PMP uh, would would have I am sure would have heard about what is cone of uncertainty. Uh, but what I'm trying to achieve using this slide is why do we need agile? We had a traditional waterfall model. What is the need of moving towards agile? Right? So traditionally when we were working on a waterfall model those projects used to uh, last for years and years and by the end of when we we used to come to the end of that project most of the time we used to realize that whatever has been created or has been produced either does not meet requirement or the quality uh, the, the quality of the produce is very low but in agile we try to mitigate that how so what is the biggest risk do you think any software process would have what are the biggest risks can you use your chat windows to type what do you think are the biggest risks uh, which are in, uh, involved in any software project roi absolutely what else deliver on time quality without any bugs absolutely quality unclear requirements bang on so one of the biggest risk which I see is unclear requirements or wrong assumptions or the as unclear assumptions quality even if the quality is high but you have created something which was not even asked for right i mean the requirements were not clear there were too many assumptions even a good quality would not help any software so one of the biggest risks that any software project has is not 
clearly understood requirements because when we work on a waterfall model requirements are just visited once during the requirement analysis phase it is rarely a case when you when you are into the design phase or maybe the uh, implementation phase or maybe during the testing phase you go back and clarify those requirements those requirements are move forward with too many assumptions and by the end they are, the product is or the software is actually delivered to the client it is completely or maybe a lot different from what actually was asked for or what what was client's expectation right so in waterfall you are working in a big bang way how many times did that happen that you created an SRS document and you revisited it? Or maybe you created a test plan and you revisited it. Very rarely this happens. It is just lying in one folder or hidden folders or maybe un unknown locations of your configuration systems. Right? But in Agile, we uh, work on tits and bits. We do not work in a big bang way. We work in sm on small requirements right if a, there is a requirement for which we are not clear uh, we do not have mo much information about around it we do not work on it we defer that requirement till the time we uh, we have more clarity around it right we work on prioritized set of requirements now for example to give you an example you are working on an ERP system right it's a August or second maybe second quarter of the year do you think implementation of a taxation system during the second quarter of year would make sense no because you're not gonna use taxation system till the fourth quarter you are not going to do tax implement tax calculation any kind of details before February or March right so agile says something which you are not gonna use immediately defer it right there could be a case uh, in one of the budgets during a winter session or something some parameters of the text calculation maybe slab changes something happens you will have to go back to that requirement and re-implement it so if you're not gonna use something defer it work on something which is needed at current situation right there could be a case that you fro you froze a requirement you were working on it but while implementing you realized well while implementing you realize that there is something um, uh, that needs to be changed or maybe this is not technically possible you reprioritize those requirements or maybe you you're working on requirement for example uh, if I talk from a login screen perspective there is a field called username when you started working on it when you had all the requirement analysis and workshops right you uh, you worked on it and you real uh, the re initial requirement was the username would have three and more than three characters but while you were working on it you analyzed that um, uh, maybe there are there are too many customers who have username with two characters for example somebody in China would have right you changed the requirement okay you can you have an option to change now coming back to the cone of uncertainty cone of uncertainty is nothing uh, but it says that when you estimate your requirements in the initial phase the actual difference uh, the they vary from the actual estimates four times it could be more or it could be less the on an average the variation um, which a typical requirement would have at the start of a phase which is like inception phase if you say if you look at this figure right it is four times different from it to avoid that situation most of the time what happens is in requirement analysis phase you try to pad those estimates but either the padding happens too much or it is even too less right but in agile we do not do any a kind of upfront requirement uh, upfront estimation agile flattens this cone of uncertainty how in agile our requirements are uh, designed have are, def are defined on the basis of hierarchy on the highest most hierarchy we have epic okay then we have features 
I'm sorry uh, for the writing, please. Features. Then we have user stories. And then we have tasks. Right? Till the time we are on the highest level of requirement, we do we do not estimate it in the terms of ours. Till till epics and features and user stories, our estimations are based on story points. And what are story points? Story points are nothing but they define the complexity of the requirement. Okay, we do not estimate in the term in terms of hours till the times we come till the time we come to the task level. So, for example, an epic would be for a job seeker, a job seeking job search engine or job seeking website like Monster or uh, Nokri.com. A typical epic would be implementation of a search functionality. Right, a feature could be implementation on the search functionality basis of different personas, like an HR or a job seeker, because for both these two people, a search functionality would be different. An HR using a search functionality would want to look for resumes, would want to have a download feature with the search, right? But for a job seeker, he would want to uh, do a job search based on certain keywords, advanced keywords, and would want to apply through the search field right so these features uh, i mean based on the persona the requirements for the particular uh, for the the uh, implementation for the particular requirement completely changes and when you come down to the user story it could be something like as a job seeker i want to uh, do a keyword search or as a job seeker i want to focus my uh, i would want to refine my uh, search based on number of years of experience or location these could be typical user stories and when you go down to a task level a typical task would be writing of test cases test cases review test cases uh, uh, or maybe unit test cases or maybe deployment so these are the tasks. So in agile till user story level, we talk from the complexity point of view. If a user story is estimated at four story points and any other user story is estimated to be at two user points. So the typical difference between those two would be the user story with store four story points would take almost double the time of user story, which has been estimated at two story points and your number of hours come into picture at the task level because it's easy to do so right you can estimate the total amount of time that you would take to write a test case the only reason we estimate in user story uh, user stories features and epics and story points is to uh, to exploit variability to give that option to adapt to the change. So for example, if I say search engine would take 10 hours, but when I move down the line, there is a change in the requirement that I want to, um, or maybe there's some change in pagination or maybe some kind of a change is, happens in the requirement. Now, when I've already estimated my epic at a 10, 10 hour, it, it becomes a little tedious. It becomes a little, uh, you know, not very easy to change. Uh, change because I have already estimated it to 10 hours it might not be very easy for me to accept it might take now 50, 20 hours to implement the change so we avoid doing that we only estimate at the task so this is how and plus once you are going down the hierarchy in the requirements you, you have your product owners who are your proxies for business analyst and your stakeholder proxies so whatever assumptions you have and whatever sprints or iterations you are planning to work those features and user stories you revisit them you have a planning mini meeting with your product owner you get all the assumptions clarified so every time you pick a feature to work on in a particular sprint you have a planning meeting and you get all the assumptions clarified and you define the acceptance criteria which does not happen in a typical waterfall model once elaborated they are not revisited okay so this is how agile helps you flatten the cone of uncertainty any questions on this please take two minutes and if you have any questions on this please feel free to ask me
Okay. Meanwhile, I have uh, questions coming. I'll take it later and I'll just move ahead. Okay. So having said that, that uh, agile flattens the cone of uncertainty. So what do you think are benefits of agile? Right. Uh, one of the typical benefit of agile, uh, best benefit of agile is that you, you mitigate all the risks. The requirements are clearly understood because based on the priorities, you are working on the requirements, right? So if something which is of no, uh, less importance, you will not pick up that requirement and you will not work on it. So that helps you reduce waste because there are a couple of times that there some uh, and a requirement a requirement is a delighter. It's good to have requirement. It is not very important kind of a requirement and teams spent a couple of hours or maybe a couple of weeks implementing it. But in Agile, since you are uh, prioritizing your requirements every two to three weeks, you are you are doing the planning session every two to three weeks with your stakeholders and you're demonstrating your product, whatever you are working every two to three weeks, uh, chances of having implementing the less important requirement reduces, which helps further helps you reduce waste. You are not spending an extra effort on something which is not needed. Right then. Uh, next is increased speed, right? Why do you think it is increased speed? Because you are working on something which is a need of an hour and you are delivering a product at the end of each iteration every two to three weeks. Your, your product increment is your return to market or maybe your market delivery increases every two to three weeks. So you are ready to deliver a product every two to three weeks, right? So thus you are increasing the speed. In Agile, we do not uh, believe in hierarchical structure uh, or maybe authoritative leadership. In Agile, we have some a terminology which is called servant leadership. So when we say servant leadership, there is no one who will come and tell you that this is what you do, what you need to do. As a team, you need to have that trust. You need to have that ownership that, okay, these are the five requirements which my team will be working on priority in, in on this in this particular sprint and based on it you based on the priority you pick up those requirements and you start working on it so there is no one who tells you that this is what you need to work on which improves the morale of the team which improves the trust factor within the team and obviously when your teams are motivated when your teams are happy teams are happy the quality of the product is always high and they have in turn and when they're producing a good quality, they obviously get kudos from the higher management and they have improved confidence and they are more productive. Clear. So the key five key benefits of agile are reduced waste, increased speed, improved decision making, improved confidence, improved trust, trust and safety. But to have everything, this, achieve all the five benefits of Agile, your teams need to collaborate. You guys need to get up and speak to each other. There are a couple of times you would see that you have a requirement clarification or you need some kind of information. People write an email and wait for somebody to respond to those emails. Agile says do not do that. Get up and talk to that person. Agile believes in face to face communications. If you are co-located, right? If you have a distributed team structure, pick up a phone and talk or maybe organize a video conferencing, collaborate. So if you're not collaborating, your agile implementation will not be successful. Hence, it is said agile is a mindset shift. Teams need to come out of that uh, ego or uh, uh, or maybe what you call that that shell to be agile and for agile to be effective. Okay, okay. So I have one question here. Um, in our project, the frequency we get uh, every 1.5 months, there is a new version of web app. Obviously, for this kind of a project, since the requirements are changing so frequently and one of it's just 1.5 months, which is almost uh, two sprints, if you are uh, right, two iterations, if one iteration is of uh, three weeks, so it's almost two iterations for the, for such a volatile kind of a project, uh, Agile is best suited. Because you would have a, a set of requirements for a particular sprint and each sprint you would be revisiting your requirements. 
right so for this kind of a project so agile works best where requirements keep uh, requirements are very volatile they keep changing frequently but having said that does not mean that waterfall has completely faded out right so waterfall fits in typical kind of a projects which are short term projects and which are uh, which do not have changing requirements waterfall still works best but it only fits where it's for short term projects and the for projects for which requirements will not change over the period of time because they are short term you know what you need to build on but if you are working on an application for which the requirements keep changing and they are uh, or maybe the require client is not very clear about the requirements go for agile agile suits best for those kinds of projects okay now what is pmi acp so pm i am sure you most of you would know that pmi uh, uh, is project management institute which for from which we already have uh, one of the most famous or one of the most uh, asked certifications pmp uh pmi uh, where pmp focuses more on the high, uh, higher level of project management what is project management as whole uh, pmi acp only focuses on agile principle practices and tools and techniques right it will this certification talks from uh, what is agile how do you implement various methodologies of agile uh, it it gives you everything it tells you how as a scrum master as a, as an agile coach how you can mentor and coach your teams and once your teams are agile ready they start implementing agile how you can improvise them so it so it's it's an end to end certification which will talk about all the methodologies under the agile umbrella like scrum xp dsdm kanban lean it will talk about all those principles and uh, methodologies it will talk about all the frameworks which are available under agile it will talk you how you can how you can mentor and coach your teams it will give you communication skills how you can resolve the conflicts and then once everything is in place how you uh, start tailoring your processes and you improve your teams right so in the, uh pmi acp is a complete certification in itself so one of the questions which i had is um, after csm should i go for pmi acp yes csm is a very basic certification in my uh, in my uh, in my eye because csm only focuses on one part of agile that scrum whereas pmi acp covers the bigger umbrella it talks about everything it will talk about lean it will talk about kanban it will talk about scrum it will talk about test driven development behavior driven development it will talk about everything right it will also tell you how as a coach you should uh, get into people people management how do you tackle conflicts but csm does not talk about all those things so csm is a very basic certification which will only talk about scrum whereas acp is a bigger umbrella it will cover all the areas of agile okay but yes pmi acp from the agile perspective pmi acp is more focused around the team level agile whereas uh, it will not talk about implementation of agile at enterprise and a portfolio level okay so pmi acp is more from a team level agile clear any questions on this pmi acp are you clear okay let's move ahead uh, to appear for pmi acp you need to have 2000 hours of journal project experience and 1500 hours of agile project experience so you need to showcase total 3500 hours hours of experience out of which 2000 hours should be journal project experience and 1500 hours should be agile project experience you also need to have 21 pdus pdus is nothing but the professional development uh, unit so one pdu is equal to one hour of training the pmi acp certificate uh, training that ajureka provides since ajureka is an rep will give you the needed 121 hours of pdu this this training course is for uh, 24 hours which is spread across uh, 
uh, eight weekends and is almost 24 th three hours each weekend uh, each each day so you uh, so so this training will give you the needed 21 hours and it will talk about all the 11 13 modules which pmi acp has okay so uh, also there are 11 recommended books which are given uh, which are uh, listed down by pmi and they are known as reference materials so if you go go to pmi.org you can see the list of those books but as a recommendation or as agile coach my recommendation is if you go through the training of edge reka and you just read even one book right one book which is my griffith it is more than sufficient if you are very regular with the training sessions this training is very extensive the uh, the study material which edureka offers there are three mock tests so it is more than enough for you to clear pmi acp certification and to un understand agile concepts okay and this certification is only valid for three years after three years you need to go through uh, you need to submit 30 pdus to get this certification renewed okay so uh, the cost of this certification is almost 495 dollars right and you can appear for this uh, certification at any pro metric center right so this certification is only valid for three years uh, from 15th of july starting 15th of july the pmi acp exam pattern is getting changed just in case if you're planning to appear before it uh, you will have to get enrolled yourself at the current uh, batch of the pmi acp uh, training which is going on post 15th of july the exam pattern is getting changed so till 15th of, uh, 15th of september uh, it will undergo into uh, pilot uh, pilot phase so as of now there is no clear guidelines on what what changes PMI is doing with the exam pattern the current pattern uh, which will be valid till 15th of July is the objective pattern for uh, under which you get 120 questions and only 100 questions are marked 20 questions are the uh, warm-up kind of questions right so this pattern as i'll repeat is only valid till 15th of july as of now uh, i do not have a clear idea on what is the pattern a new what would be the new pattern for that i need some time um, and uh, this pattern will be in a pilot phase till 15th of september uh, when you register yourself at pmi website or uh, PMI website there is a good uh, complete four five page form so it asks you to justify your 2500 uh, project hours so it will ask you about the project details company name it will ask you about the supervisor details as well number contact number and what did you do in those projects so this is a complete five page form which you have to fill uh, once you fill the form submit the form uh, it goes for review with PMI it which is a 10 to 12 day process if there is some doubt which PMI guys have they might uh, take your form for the audit where they will ask you to send the hard copy of the of your firm uh, signed and attested by the supervisors and the manager's name you have specified in your uh, forms so please make sure whenever you fill that form the information that is given in form is completely legible and completely correct so just in case if you get uh, it just so in case if you get stuck at audit you are able to justify those you don't need a letter till the time you get stuck in an audit you just need to fill the form uh, the form has project name company the details which form has company details project details project description manager's name and manager's contact details okay okay so one uh, confusion i think uh, even you guys have that do you need to be pmp certified or do you uh, if you are or maybe you are in two minds should you go for pmp or pmi acp certified acp certification so as i mentioned earlier as well pmp is a broader set of uh, uh, broader set which talks about the concepts of project manager project management in general it does not focus on uh, a, any specific terminologies like either agile or maybe uh, waterfall or maybe v model it 
talks about the journal concepts of project management so even if you are not planning to stick to software industry if you are not from software industry and you are doing some kind of project management you can still go for pmp but pmi acp is more from a sort of agile point of view so if you are into a software industry and your projects are either planning to move towards agile or maybe um, you are already working in agile you do not need to be either a project manager or something even a development or a testing professional can get in do pmi acp uh, if you don't intend to become a agile coach in this, even in that case pmi acp is a certification for you because it will help you understand agile in a better way and as a team member as a individual individual person you can you can contribute better right so pmp is certification is for people who are into hardcore project management or who are not uh, deep into how teams are performing they are they are just into stakeholder interaction and they are not interacting with teams on the daily basis pmp is for those people while pmi acp is for people who are doing both stakeholder management and are interacting with teams and they are involved in day to day working of teams right um this is more about the uh, uh, in nutshell this is the major difference between a pm pmp and pmi acp i'll request you to please go through the ppt just in case if you have any question please ask me please go through the differences which are listed down in the ppt though you will also have the copy of this ppt and also this webinar with you but just in case if you have question uh, please feel free to ask me after you go through this ppt uh edgebreaker support will share this ppt and the link to this video uh, where this webinar is stored and you guys can see that edgebreaker support team would share the link with you after the webinar is over uh so there are 11 reference books which are listed down you can go down go to at pmi.org and go through all those books okay uh, but one book that i recommend is mike griffith i'll just type the name for all okay mike griffith is a book having said that but you still need to have 21 pdus even if you have read that book you still need to have 21 pdus in or in order to give this certification okay let's go ahead okay so once you are through your pmi acp certification you have you have registered yourself you have applied for the date you have paid the 495 fees of 495 dollar and you have appeared for the exam this is a kind of a certificate that you get from pmi acp all you get is you have cleared the exam when did you clear and when it is due for renewal uh the exam results are based on uh, the three levels of proficiency across six domains which are defined uh, in the pmi acp curriculum so and after once you are done with it you are you would you can you are eligible for applying for scrum master uh, even if you are a technical guy you are eligible for uh, uh, handling the agile architectural way i mean uh, you would understand how as a arc or maybe as a uh, technical person how your design or architectural evolves around the uh, in agile methodologies so you would even as a testing professional you would know how testing should be carried out in a agile way so after this certification all the people from different fields would be able to do so uh so as i mentioned uh, if you plan to go enroll to the uh, website of edureka for the certification uh, you would have live and interactive sessions from the the, the trainer conducted sessions would be there and you have lifetime access to all the training material and three mock tests and the session test which are given there uh, you have 24 by 7 uh, technical support even if after the Uh, training is over if you have any kind of doubts you can feel free to uh, reach out to the support team and we will make sure that all your questions are answered um and then you again you get your 21 uh, 21 pdus in case if you if you have appeared for the pmi acp certification and you need 30 pdus for renewal edureka conducts keep conducting various webinars from which you can uh, get one pdu so using those uh, webinars you can earn pdus 
okay um, just in case if you have more questions please feel free to reach out to Edureka and or maybe you can connect with me my name is Shuchi Singla you can just connect with me over the LinkedIn and I will be an Edureka and I will be more than happy to answer those questions um, I'll give you five minutes five more minutes just in case if you have questions please feel free to type in and I'll be I'll be more than happy to answer them if you if one a few of if you're planning to drop off please make sure you fill in the feedback form uh, it will help us improve better and if, if, if at all you have any concerns we will a support team will work with you and we will uh, reach out to you please make sure you fill in the feedback form before you drop in case if you don't have any question Yes, Edureka classes are online um, based on the time zones and the major time zones people are in. We try to adjust the classes. They are every Saturday, Sunday, these classes are conducted. It's three hours each day. Uh, so one training session for 24 hours spans across eight days. Uh, for fees, you will have to talk to Edureka. They are the right people to guide you. No, my Griffith is listed down. Uh, it's the book's name is uh, uh, something like um, uh, PMI ACP guided way to PMI ACP, something of that sort. I'll, I'll, I'll maybe I'll uh, send the uh, complete details of this book to support team, and they will send that information to you all. Yes, if you are attending the lot of webinars and if you are attending conferences, different conferences, you and if you are getting those PDUs, you are free to renew. You can get those uh, renewed. Uh, you can use those uh, PDUs to renew your PMI ACP certification, but you will have to submit the details of the uh, webinars and the conferences that you attend at PMI website and they will approve it. Uh, time schedule is not fixed based on the kind of people we have kind of groups we have the current batch that we are doing is at 8 30 p.m. it is happening every Saturday Sunday so it has just started last weekend we have been through only uh, two classes and obviously if you plan to enroll in the current batch you would get the recording from the of the last two classes as well so it is currently it's 8 30 p.m. to 11 30 p.m. Uh, if you want to register to the course uh, maybe I can connect you with the Edureka support team or you can just drop uh, drop an email to the Edureka guys and they would get back to you uh, so a support team can be reached out at edureka.co and I can be reached out at s at edureka.co so support team I have given the email IDs you can reach out to us anytime if you are attentive in your classes if you are getting the concepts if you just go through and revise the PPT I mean uh, uh, even uh, two hours a week that is more than sufficient but you need to be very attentive and need to make sure that whatever uh, you are studying you just go back and at least go back to the uh, PPT and read that that's again individuals uh, grasping so I would not be able to comment on how much you need to study but if you guys are alert during the training you it is not a it, you can clearly go through it uh, yes you will get an PPT of once you enroll for the training you will get the complete study material which will include all the uh, details of all, all the 13 modules the presentations for all the 13 modules the class recordings and there are three mock tests as well which are the real simulation of the real exam three mock tests and then after each end of each module also there is a session test which is available so you get lifetime access to that material any other question guys before you drop off please make sure you fill in the feedback form it helps us improve improve better and if at all you have concerns we will try to resolve it please make sure you fill in the feedback form thank you thank you everyone um, many thanks just fill in the feedback form before you drop off. Thank you so much.